Coach Taylor Dynan, uh, ThursdayNight.com. I have a question for you about, um, to my knowledge, this is the first time Georgia State is going to be starting their football team or football season on the road. Does that change your approach at all, you know, comparing to preparing first game of the year as a road game compared to a home game? You know, I don't think so. I uh, tell you the truth, it doesn't play uh, really into anything in our preparation. I mean, other than the fact, you know, when you go and you're playing in front of 108,000 fans, you have to work on a little bit of the game management from a, a hearing aspect. But uh, to tell you the truth, it's not much different. John Radcliffe, 680 The Fan, Atlanta Sports X. Coach, with, uh, you know, ultimately on offense, 23 returning lettermen and uh, 24 on defense. I mean, ultimately, are your expectations higher now that you basically have so many veterans, so many leaders on this team at this point in time that coming out the gate, you're looking for that leadership right away, or are you just going through camp looking to feel people out and see where everybody falls? No, uh, I am feeling fairly confident, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, we go through an off season, and the off season is to develop leadership, is to develop, you know, whatever your program wants to be about. And when I had my uh, in the spring meetings with each one of our players, uh, I do it every single year. You know, I ask them about who are our leaders on our football team, and you can get a sense of uh, how your team is going to be and and how they're going to respond, how they're going to react to certain situations. Because uh, two years ago, I would have had. 20 different answers about who our leaders were. And uh, in our spring meetings, I had about five answers. And so everyone kind of knows who those guys are. And it's some guys that have been here for a while, some guys that are, are relatively new, but th there was a real distinct uh, picture of who our leaders were and who they're going to be. And that is a positive, positive sign. Uh, you're not going into each and every week looking for some guy to step up. Everyone has the, uh, the sense of these are our men and these are the guys that are going to lead us. And uh, we have those guys marked, and uh, they've done a good job this summer as well. I'm Ian, I'm working with the um, AJC. So I was looking at something through this, saw a lot of new coaches. Um, how, do you feel about your, how do you feel about your new hires and like, how do you feel like they can add to your program? Yeah, you know, uh, when you look at our new hires, we had some turnover. I mean, we certainly did. Uh, I think uh, in our offensive coordinator hiring Brad Glenn, uh, Brad and I are real familiar with one another. Um, as far as an offensive sense, uh, we came in, it was like we never left. And I think I last worked with Brad in 2009 at Appalachian State. So we uh, instantly sat down and started calling the same things that we were calling, you know, several years back. So that was a real familiar hire. I think Jimmy Smith, the running back position, brings a wealth of certainly uh, notoriety from what he's done at Cedar Grove and, and what he can do with our running back position, which I think is a, a pretty talented position. Uh, Traven Robertson going uh, with our defensive line. Traven was a guy that was here two years ago and now is back with us. And, and Traven had a as much of an impact two years ago on our bowl winning, uh, our first bowl win, winning team. And I just felt comfortable having him come back and establish himself as our defensive line coach. Uh, Shill Wood uh, comes over from Georgia Tech. Uh, he's going to do handle our special teams and then also our linebackers, our inside linebackers. So, uh, you know, I feel very, very confident. But I, the, one of the things that I, I really uh, think is real significant about the new hires, John Sisk. Um, Coach Sis came from Georgia Tech. Uh, he was a strength and conditioning coach over there. And what he was able to do with our football team uh, over the course of the offseason and now this summer with he and his staff is really, I think, going to be the telling factor. I've seen individuals become, uh, uh, from a strength standpoint, really grow in that aspect of it. They really, uh, you can see the change in their physical appearance uh, in their work ethic in their their discipline, uh, and that's something that was, uh, we were really needing, uh, to tell you the truth. And uh, I think that's a real, real important hire. Thomas Austin, the offensive line coach, uh, is a guy I'm familiar with. That, uh, actually, is from my hometown, played offensive line in the NFL, was a coach at Clemson University. Uh, so, yeah, the new hires, uh, uh, there were uh, uh, quite a few of those, but uh, we all feel like uh, we're as one and very convenient. So, I mean, not convenient, but very comfortable around one another. 
coach over here in the middle. Yes. Uh, Marcel Patu, Sports Inquirer. Uh, discuss Dan Ellington and his evolution at the quarterback position from last year uh, being a newcomer to the program to now having a, a spring and a summer to work with the, with the team. Oh, yeah, Dan. It, it, it's almost every single day I see Dan, there's something new and exciting about him. Uh, I, I thought he did a quite uh, uh, good job a year ago. You know, he limited his turnovers. Uh, he was able to utilize his legs in the running game. Uh, he didn't put the ball in jeopardy as far as in, in his throwing game. Uh, I think he's capable of doing both. I think he's a strong leader. Um, I think, as I said, down at Media, get, media Days uh, there in New Orleans that, uh, you know, good football teams have to have a good quarterback, and that good quarterback has to be a good leader, and I think Dan is that for us. Uh, I see him, him really uh, more so developing this year uh, under Brad Glenn uh, in the uh, type of offensive scheme that we'll run. It won't be drastically different than, than what we've done in the past, but there's some new things to let Dan kind of take advantage of the game himself, let him kind of dictate some of the things uh, that we didn't let him do a year ago. Um, but really just thrilled to death to have him here. I mean, um, when you watch a guy like him work, uh, you see a smile on his face. You see a determination on his face. Uh, you, you see the intensity that you want in, in, in your quarterback. And like I said, every day I walk in and see his face, I, I start smiling. Coach Luke Gamble, Fox 5 Sports. You talked about Jimmy Smith from, from Cedar Grove. Um, obviously, he's an Atlanta guy. He's been around. He established a winning culture. Uh, what does it mean just to be able to bring him into your program? And then what does it mean from a recruiting standpoint and getting guys from the Atlanta area in here? Yeah, well, hiring Jimmy was uh, one of the most important things. And to tell you the truth, it, it's great for recruiting and things of that nature. But his, I think, relationship and, and how he coaches those players uh, is really the biggest, biggest surprise. I mean, he had an instant impact with our running back group. When I say instant impact, I mean, uh, the, the guys were walking in like, Coach, Man, he is awesome. He is, he is fantastic. Just the way he communicates with one another, especially in recruiting. His name uh, carries a lot of weight in this area uh, for what he did at Cedar Grove, you know, winning those championships. Uh, just really thrilled to death. And, and what's really great about Jimmy is down to earth. Man, and, and we all are as a staff. We're really down to earth type guys. You know, he could have walked in here and, you know, from what he had done in that high school and so many championships and, and just, you know, but he, he's really just down to earth. He's just a good old guy, a good old coach that loves football and loves kids. And then talking about the new facilities that you have here, the, yes. the addition to your facilities, just what does that mean for your program and taking a step uh, in the right direction and taking that next step to providing a winning culture here at Georgia yeah. State? You know, when you look at these facilities, you look at uh, where we are today in our team room, and our weight room, and our training room, our operations suite, the stadium, I, I don't look at it as taking a step. We took a leap, uh, a big leap. I mean, there, there's a, a, an abundance amount of programs across the country that would love to be sitting in these facilities right now. And we have coaches that come through here from other programs and, and their mouths drop and they're like, you know, they're, they're pretty much amazed. So it does, you, you can utilize or you can say take a step, I say take a leap. But what we've done and what we've established here at Georgia State Stadium as far as the convenience for our student athletes, the first class facilities that we have now and what we can do here uh, in season and out of season is phenomenal. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, anytime you come in and, and, and you play immediately as a freshman, you, you haven't been through the fire with, it, with the guys on the football team. I mean, you haven't developed that sense of the, the trust. You know, you haven't been through that off season. I mean, you, you really haven't pushed yourself in front of those men. Uh, so, it, so it's really, really hard. And they've, they're coming from a, uh, from a high school program right into a collegiate atmosphere and, and and being set forth in front of some grown men uh, to go out and play. Uh, the development under our strength and conditioning staff is first and foremost key. Uh, 
some of those guys can they, they, they can walk in there and get up under a bar in a weight room because I was scared it was going to fall on them and you know hurt them. But uh, but now uh, you see the strength develop, the mental aspect. I mean, the mental aspect, the confidence of knowing that you've been out there and done that before, and now you have an opportunity to go out there and utilize the knowledge you gained from those those types of games that you had. Thus being, I mean, yeah, they were tough games for us. Excuse me, they were tough, but to know what to expect. Uh, I've seen all that. I mean, you see kids with, with eyes that were that big, and now those eyes are, are a little bit smaller now. And, uh, and that's, that's, a great, that's great to see. Yes, sir. When it comes to your approach when you come into your third year here, what do you think has changed or maybe you've gotten a little bit more perspective on from your first season to now coming into your third season? You know, that's, that's a great question. Uh, it really is. Uh, I can tell you one thing. The older you are as a football team, the better you are as a football team. It doesn't matter if you have better players or whatnot. It's just the experience. It's the knowledge that these guys are carrying over from game one to game two to game three to season one to season two season three. Uh, I think our first uh, season we had, uh, I can't remember, it may have been 28 seniors, Allison, uh, something to that effect. So we had an uh, an abundance of, of age and experience on the football team. And it wasn't so-called winning experience, but guys that went out there and played. Uh, so when I look at our football team, I, I, I go through, you know, let's just say the offensive line. You, you look at those guys and you say, okay, how many starts have they had under their belt? Uh, let's talk about our wideouts. Let's see our running backs. You know, how many of the, those guys have actually went out there and played? So when I look at this football team, I see a lot of guys that have gained that experience. And, and, I, and I see a guy that's going to go out there and utilize that experience to become a better player and then ultimately make us a better football team. So in 30 days, you'll meet up with Tennessee. And I mean, yes. basically, first time, it's easy to get excited about the situation of where you're playing, who you're playing, and your first time putting on pads. What's your message day one to try and keep the focus on not the lights and the glitz and the glamour of it, but to what the goals are for this season? Well, if you've sat in my meeting or, or heard me speak from time to time, you, there's not a lot of glitz and glamour talk from me. It, it's really straightforward. I mean, more importantly, is to the point uh, they know exactly where we stand as a football team. They know who I am as a football coach and how we're going to prepare to go into any game, whether it's Tennessee or it's, uh, going to play Chattanooga. It, it doesn't matter. You've got to go in with a mindset that, that it's going to take hard work, determination, effort, enthusiasm and a lot of tough days to get us where we can go and even compete in that first game. So we, we, won't, uh, we won't be talking about glitz and glamour and, and, and stadiums and size and really who we're playing for uh, until probably that game week. Yes. Hey, Coach Kelly Price, Fox 5 Sports. How excited are you guys to just get out there tomorrow and kind of get this thing rolling? You know, if you're a football coach, you're <laughs> – it, this is what you live for, to tell you the truth. I mean, to think that you only get really 12 games to go out there and play, and then you, you've got you've to go recruit, you get 15 days of spring practice, you, you can't work, really work with them in the summer. And that's hard for a coach that really lives to go out there and compete and work and, and, and be around his football team. So, you know, I, I said it earlier, we, we work continuously year-round, but the fact that we get to all go out there, practice together, uh, meet together, be around one another. I mean, the, the game of football is about camaraderie, it's about family, it's about relationships. Uh, there's not a whole lot of individualism in it. That's the, that's the exciting part. Uh, I mean, that's truly what makes a coach a coach is, is having that opportunity to have, I won't call them my guys, but our guys uh, to all be here together and then to try to take that football team, mold it and grow it, into something that's going to become successful. That, that's what really fuels me.